Hello everyone. I've been working on a new project for the holidays. I am creating monogram tiles for friends and family that I am giving gifts to. And I wanted to go ahead and create one um, as a video today. So in case this is something that, that you're interested in creating for your friends and family. I thought it just added a little bit more of a, a personal touch to the holidays. So here are our materials. I have a brown and black micron pen, a white and gold jelly roll, some charcoal, white charcoal pencil, um, and then two tortillon, one for my pencil and one for the white charcoal. And then I'm using these Bijou Zen Tangle tiles. They're one and a half inches square with rounded edges and a little like note space in the back. Um, but if you're if you don't have your hands on some of these official Zentangle tiles first, I would definitely suggest you go ahead and find some. Um, that you can purchase them online. They are absolutely lovely. The the paper is is just decadent to work with. Um, but if you can't, I usually will cut Bristol paper, and they do have tan Bristol paper. They also have gray, so you can sort of play around with what type of Bristol paper or what type of Zentangle tile you use for this project. Let's go ahead and get started with our drawing. I'm going to go ahead and get started in the typical Zentangle fashion by drawing light dots in each corner of my tile. And then very lightly, as lightly as I can, connecting those dots to create a frame. Next, I would like to go ahead and just sketch out a little bit the letter um, that I want to use here. So, so I can figure out placement um, and just the basic shape of my letter. So I'm going to start with the letter B. Let's see, am I satisfied with that shape? I think that's a, a pretty good just background basic shape. You won't be able to see this shape in the end. Um, so this is just really to give us, you know, a hint of the shape. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start getting going with the drawing. So I'm using my black cyan. And I want this B have a little bit of character to me. So maybe it has like swoopy sides and edges. I'll go ahead and round those off. work on this first swoop. Mm. I tend not to follow my pencil marks exactly. To me, they're more of a suggestion. And I can decide whether to follow that suggestion or not, you know, in the moment as I'm drawing. So again, I'm going to add a bit of rounding here. All right, let's add that. Now with this one, I think I want it to come, to go behind and create a bit of a spiral. There we go. Make this letter a little bit more dynamic a little bit more personality. All right, let's 
Uh, no, do I want to add an outside line or an inside one? I think I'm going to add an inside line. And again, rounding off. So this is the pattern I start with. I, I draw using my pencil one of the letters I'm interested in. And then I sort of play around with, you know, how I want to ink that letter and what kinds of embellishments might I want to make. Do I want it to be straight and linear to be made very geometric? I want to think curvy. Hmm. I think I want to, let's see, add a curve here too, right? There's a natural spot for it right there. There we go. And that also means I can round here. happy with this letter? Is there anything else I want to add? I kind of want to change the shape here. So in Zentangles, we'd call that redefine the line. You know, I see that there's this shape. It's all right, but maybe I want it to look a little different. So I'm just going to draw a little bit more here and redefine that line. Mm. Yeah, make that a little bit better. All right, from there, I think I'm happy with my letter. Let's go ahead and switch to the brown pen. And the first thing I'm going to do is just aura this B. So in Zentangles, aura means you're drawing sort of an outline, trying to stay an equal distance away from the inside shape as much as you can. Hmm, I might want to add some rounding there. I'll think about it. No. I think I'll keep it. All right, now let's go ahead and do the same on the inside. Once we've added that initial outline, I like to then add some what's called um, fescue in the Zentangle world. So these little lines that swoop out, and I'm going to put a little like, bulb at the end. I like to draw a little circle here and then ink in the rest. The circle later, I'll put some white jelly roll so it makes it look like a shine. And I'm going to just find a few places here and come off of that border that we just drew. A few places where it feels good to add one of these fescue. I want to add one like um, 
And in this case, I'm okay if some of these fescue go over that border that we drew initially. Remember I was saying that border, I often treat it more as um, a suggestion. And it's nice later to have some things that go behind the border, other things that stay inside the border, and then a few things that break the border and go on top of it. Makes your tile just a little bit more dynamic. Like the different elements on your tile are interacting. Mm, let's see, what else do I want? I feel like I want something up here. Anything else? I feel like this area could use something in maybe that area up here. And let's see, do I want it to go down like that one or up? I think I want it to go up. I love all these little decisions you get to make while you're tangling. Hmm, and I think one, maybe one thing right here. I think I'll come right off of this. Oh, no, I just did it over right here. Okay. All right, so now wherever I either added some fescue or I see a point in that original um, aura line that we put around our B, I again will be adding some rounding in there. And anywhere I see like a curve where I feel like a little shadow might make it bit more dynamic. Adding these um, bits of rounding where the line has a bit more weight, a bit more, it's a bit darker there. Add some really nice contrast when you're drawing. It creates a little bit more drama, as they say. Um, I find I do a lot of this rounding. Somet somehow, in my mind, I, it feels like the rounding makes things look a little bit more finished. Now, what do we want to do with these inside spaces? I think I want to put a little fescue here. Just that one will do, I think. And then, hmm, there might 
be in a simpler one right there. It might, let's see, let's see what it does. Hmm. Do I want to start it from here or here? It might go behind. And then I'll round these two points. There we go. All right. So now we've got our first aura and a set of fescue. I'm going to go ahead and do a second aura. This time, you know, including all of that fescue that we just drew. Remember when you're drawing, just take your time. Especially if you, you know, intend on giving this as a gift. Let this peaceful energy infuse your drawing. We just kind of want to spread that feeling of love and joy during the holiday season. So maybe you can inspire and invite some of that love and joy as you're drawing. Let that be part of the gift, both for you and for the person who will receive your monogram. Should make this drawing a gift for yourself. Just remember as you draw to be patient and kind to yourself. So say a line doesn't turn out just the way you want it. All right. All right, right here. Feels like an internal space that I want. Yep, there we go. Okay, so anywhere, again, where there are these like curves, I'm gonna add a bit of rounding or a bit of weight to the line. I do inevitably notice that I usually forget a few spots, <laughs> but that's okay. It's part of the character.
思ったようにそして今日は、ちょっとチェリーファーデーパーフェクトタイムです。それでは、ちょっとチェリーファーデーパーフェクトタイムです。それでは、ちょっとチェリーファーデーパーフェクトタイムです。それでは、ちょっとチェリーファーデーパーフェクトタイムです。それでは、ちょっとチェリーファーデーパーフェクトタイムです。それでは、Going to go ahead and ink in that line and go behind any time one of those fescues cross that borderline. I will draw a second line or a ing <clears throat> that border. We'll probably <clears throat> ink that border in using one of our jelly roll pens. I did notice I wanted to go back right here. The line's a little bumpy, so I'm going to do that redefine the line one more time there just to smooth it out. <clears throat> Is there anywhere else I want to smooth out using the black marker, the black? Take my micron pen. Nope, I think I'm good. All right. So now we've got that border. I want to go ahead and go back to my brown pen. Mm, no, I think I will actually stick with the black pen. The next thing I like to add is orbs. So wherever we see a spot, Where we can put an orb in, just sort of nestle it in there, and then add any rounding that seems appropriate. Oh, that pen might be a good spot. Just sort of nestled in there. Another one right here. I think the little guy right next door. Right in the corner. And this is where, you know, your own personality as an artist comes through. You can add as many of these orbs or as few of these orbs as you would like.
big one right here there's so many fun choices that you can play around with and that's why no two tiles will ever be the same, even if it's the same artist drawing. I feel like I want one more right here. So the next step that I'm going to take is doing some shading and highlighting. But before I do that, even though using an eraser isn't typically a part of Zentangles, if you feel like there are some lines that we drew earlier that you don't like where they pl they're placed or you think that they'll get in the way, um, you can, obviously, it's your artwork, go ahead and erase them. So when we drew that B in the very beginning using pencil just for an outline, I noticed that some of those outlines, you know, will sort of get in the way when I'm highlighting. They'll put graphite in a place that I don't want graphite to be. So I'm just going to do some quick erasing of those original B lines. There we go. Now I am ready to take out my pencil and add some shading. I'm going to start inside my B and put some shading along the right side edge of these sort of orb-like shapes that we drew when we rounded off the sides. There we go. But I think I'll do the same here. Where did that go? Here. So I'm starting this pattern, I guess, of shading along the right side of things. So I'll put these little, little curved lines of graphite to the right side of many of these orbs. There we go. And then I like to just add graphite along the inside of this border here. Shading is something that, you know, many folks tell me they're not very comfortable with it. And I will say it's one of those things that you get a little bit more comfortable as you practice over time. You start to figure where you like to put your graphite and how much um, you like to put. I did find when I first started, I would either add far too much graphite, or definitely not enough. And it took a while to learn that balance. Oh, I think right here I'd like some graphite. There we go. Okay, so I have a tortillon that I just used with graphite. 
And we can tell because it's the darker tip of my two tortillon. So let's go ahead and work this in. Now when I'm doing these orbs, I create that little that little curve in the way I move my tortillon. Still sort of curving in that backward C ish shape. Remember when you use your tortillon to use hold it like to the side like this rather than straight up and down. So you can maintain that point a little bit. And sometimes they revert to like little circles. Like here, when I do a border, I usually use little circular motions. And as you're working in this graphite, the tortillon itself will pick up some graphite. So if there's a spot where you feel like, ah, oh, I want a little bit more, you can sort of use the tortillon to pull um, or to just add more where there wasn't any graphite to begin with because there's already some graphite on your tortillon. Oh, like right here in the background. Okay, there we go. Okay, a few more little orbs. These little guys here. Okay, and Kind of smooth out this section here. I do kind of want the background to be a little bit darker, indicating, you know, a little bit of contrast between the background and the the bee and all of its embellishments. Okay, that's looking good to me for now. And we'll decide, you know, what we want to do with this outside edge. If we want to just leave it or if we want to add some shade later along the outside edge. For now, I'm going to start using my white um, charcoal pen, pencil, I'm sorry. And, or it's white, it's called, it's pastel chalk, it says. Mm, okay. So we added graphite on the right side. So I'm going to put the chalk on the left side. Same thing here. And all of my orbs, sort of in the top left side, putting a bit of chalk there. And the reason I like this, so this is a Renaissance tile. I should have told you that in the beginning. Uh, so it's that tan color. And the reason I like this is the chalk really stands out. You know, if I were to use <clears throat> a white tile, using chalk like this wouldn't be very effective. 
unless, you know, we had like painted the tile or something before we started drawing. So I like both the gray and the Renaissance or tan colored paper because it offers you that freedom to both shade and highlight, making your art just a little bit more dynamic. I have to do something with those middle parts, huh? Didn't look at those earlier. Okay. I think that's good. Let's use that tortillon that goes with our chalk pencil. I just lightly smear this in. When I first started Zentangles, I always wondered, why in the world do you work in that chalk? Like, it looks pretty good the way it is. It sort of sometimes takes away once you smooth in. And what I found was if I don't work this chalk in, well first it does smooth it out, but if I don't work, work this chalk in, then later if I want to add some white jelly roll because of all that chalk dust is like laying right there on top of the page, the white jelly roll won't work very well. So I've gotten pretty used to just really working this this white chalk into the page. And then if I want a really strong highlight, I'm using that white jelly roll pen. The one thing that's a struggle with this white charcoal is that, or white chalk, is that sometimes it gets on the lines that you've drawn and it sort of dulls them a little bit. You might have to go back and again, do that redefine the line where you draw over your lines again to make them more distinct. <coughs> That's looking all right. Let's go and work on that, those middle parts. I think I'm going to add some pencil there. So yeah, right along the side. There we go. And our tortillon again. Work that graphite in. And then followed by a little bit of highlighting in those areas. Just a little bit. I don't even, I don't think I'm going to put any down there. So yeah, like right here, this brown fescue got a little bit covered by the chalk, so probably redefine the line there. Let's go ahead and do that. Looking nice and vibrant now. Anywhere else while I'm at it? Mm, maybe this right here. This little fescue. Oh, that's looking good. Anywhere else? Nope, I feel all right with that. Okay, so I'm going to now go in with my white jelly roll pen, add a few more little highlights. <clears throat> Just a little bit of a, a dot in the corner. Sometimes you might not be able to see it, but just a little dot in the corner sometimes can be very effective adding just a little bit more shine. And then wherever we left those, those circles in the fescue, just gonna add some white there for the shine. I 
and just little subtle things that make it a little bit more vibrant. Just give it some more character. Make it look a little bit more finished. All right, I think I want to add a little bit of white here and white here. And really highlight these parts on the bee. Maybe I put a little bit there. And a little bit right there. Maybe right here. Mm -hmm. See, it makes it look nice and shiny. I like it right there, too. And I don't know. Let's see if we can fit one in here. There we go. All right, I think the last, well, I say that, but we'll see where it goes. I would like to, I think, ink in this border using gold. So this is my gold jelly roll pen. And while I'm inking this in, I'm going to think about, do I want to add a shadow around the outer edge of my border? What do I want to do with that outer border, if anything? This gold jelly roll does take a moment to dry and settle so make sure once you've put down some of this jelly roll ink that you let it dry before touching it There's so much graphite on the inside in the background behind the bee that I, I wonder if I, if I do want to add, I think I will add some graphite along the outer edge, but only a little bit. And I'm going to try my best to sort of nestle it in there right along the edge. So in this case, I put some graphite as the, the background, but you can always either, you know, leave it blank or you can add some hatching in the back. So some like subtle lines. So really play with, you know, how you create your background. You could always um, not draw the border and not have a background really. Um, so all these little decisions, like I said, are really up to you. And it's great because as you're drawing these different monograms, you can you know, make different choices each time so that they look personalized and somewhat different for each person. So in these really small circular motions, just gently smoothing out and pulling this graphite out a little bit from the edge of the border. Just creating a subtle shadow.
All right. I'm liking that, but I do think I do think I would like to add some hatching lines in the back, um, like I was talking about earlier, just to add a little bit more um, contrast between all of my drawing and the background space. Let me define that line just a little. Yeah. But I don't want to use my PN for that. The PN tip I think is a little bit too thick. So in this case, I'm going to use the Micron 01 in black. <clears throat> and just all of these, um, this background area, and for these really light horizontal hatching lines. Let's see how it goes. I might like it. I might decide I don't like it and I'll not do that again in future tiles. Sometimes you just have to experiment. Some of the areas are a little small, but you still get the subtle hint. Of lines in the background. I'm going to have that curve there. I'm not going to add one there. Hmm. I quite like it. I do think it adds a bit of a contrast between the background space and all of the, the drawing that we did. What's going on right there? That little orb got left out. Let's treat it like an orb rather than like background space. Um, that orb was created when we were rounding in. So it wasn't an intentional orb, it was just, this came out of the rounding process. So, let's give it a little personality like an orb. There we go. And then a dot from the white. And then I think this one's all done. So like I said, I hope you can enjoy trying out making some of these monograms, putting you know, shapes, making different choices each time. For all the different people that you want to gift to this holiday season. Hmm. Yeah, just experiment with it. Play with it and decide what you like and what you don't like. I kind of like this one with these bigger orbs. That was a whole lot of fun. And this one I put hatching inside the letter itself. And instead of using the black and brown, I just used black the whole time there for that one. So just play around with it. And, I hope you do, and if you do, please let me know how it goes um, and what what you enjoy and what you liked in this practice. So I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.